Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome to the biggest episode of San Bernardino Zoo so far. Today we're going to be recreating one of the coolest pieces of architecture I have ever seen and building a brand new habitat in the zoo as well. We are going to be making a huge step to finishing off the islands. So let's get up into the drone cam and take a look at where we are at the moment. So the island is going to pretty much fill the entire area that you see here, but everything we've built so far has been way off in the distance up there. Today we're going to almost fill the entire rest of the screen. We're going to start by building a huge triumphal arch to announce the entrance to the islands. This is based on a piece of architecture which is absolutely incredible called the Bali Gates in Gilamanuk in Bali and it's just an absolutely incredible build. It's one of those buildings where when you look at it it almost looks like it couldn't exist, like it wouldn't stand up, uh, but I promise you it does. I'll put a link to a photo of the original in the description if you want to go and check it out. But it's something that I've been looking at for a long time. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to build it or not. It's, it's pretty unique looking, but I'm really glad I attempted it because I think we've done a pretty good job when it's finished. So the arch is really unique. It goes over a, a road. Um, it dates back quite some time and it's uh, the beginning of a trading hub near a port and it consists of four huge dragon statues on each side of the road and then a temple suspended in the air above the road all joined together by four arches. It looks absolutely incredible. I'm so excited to build it and we're going to start by getting the dragons done. We're using some of the new tropical pieces, uh, tropical statue pieces, and I really wish they'd given us some mirrored pieces because trying to make wings using one fishtail which points in one direction uh, is quite a challenge. But once it's all done, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I just chuck loads of stuff in there, uh, make it look really complex. There'll be some more parts added to it a bit later on. But I want to work on now getting the main plinth of the statue done so that this has got something to stand on. So we use using pretty much exclusively tropical pack pieces in this build just to get that Indonesian kind of vibe going on um, because they're so versatile now with the ability to change two different colors of stone and the moss as well. You can really get things to look exactly the way that you want it to. Um, so we're going to have two levels on this part of the plinth uh, as you look at it. So it's got a, a nice three dimensional look. So we use these brick pieces on either side of that step piece there so that it goes in in the middle and then we'll just copy these round so it's the same all the way around getting that nice sort of black almost really dark rock work look that they use a lot in Balinese architecture which I really like don't know why it's that color I don't know if it's volcanic rock um, or or what really but uh, <laughs> that seems to be the the main feature of the colors in their architecture there and it always looks so good Use some more pieces here to make the top of the plinth look a bit more interesting. Want it to be really weighty at the top and then a lot slimmer at the bottom um, and just uh, getting it as close as possible to the reference images that I was using. Uh, like I say, you can check that out yourself in a link in the description. This is starting to look nice. Um, what we want to do now is start working on the arches themselves. So these arches are crazy. They are curved and they basically look like giant serpents curving away from each statue, meeting in the middle, high above the road, and then with a the temple suspended on it. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we finish it, but it is, like I say, one of those buildings that looks like it shouldn't be able to stand up. But I promise you it does, and it has been there a very long time. So we're gonna use loads more tropical pieces here to build up just one section of the arch. And once I've got one section the way that I want it to look, then we'll start actually arranging this into an archway and then we can go in and start editing individual parts of the section so it's not all just looking the same all the way along. So like I said before about the colours we can really get this to that sort of rich dark Balinese colour that we want and then we will attach this to the back of the beginnings of this dragon here and then start getting it to curve out into the middle of the road so that we can put the temple on it. So not 100% sure where it's going to go at this point really just trying to make it sit into the statue and look like it's part of it rather than a separate piece and once I've got that exactly how I want it then we're going to start dragging it out and then rotating it we're just going to do this by eye really I'm not going to measure this I'm just going to keep moving these pieces around and rotating them until it reaches the point in the middle of the road where I want it to um, and it looks like a the same sort of angle of curve as the um, 
the original piece of architecture. So this is the, the final piece here. We'll get that in. Uh, it's not quite steep enough at this point, so I will rotate it in a second. And then we'll start putting some more decorations in to really get that sort of serpent dragon look to this tail. I absolutely love how this looks when it's finished. It's really cool. And these tropical pack pieces are just vital for this kind of stuff. Um, we've got some pieces from, I think these are base game, these are like the pieces from the India pack, or the India theme rather, um, or maybe the, uh, no it's the East Asian theme isn't it? Um, and these are going to make some of the decorations bigger and more impressive. This is a, a sort of a Chinese pool which we're going to put in upside down to add a bit of interest to the top. And then we'll use these base pieces here to, uh, to provide a base to the statue, so it's not just sort of sticking up out of the ground. The um, wooden platform, or sorry, the brick platform at the bottom is just there so that we've got this on the grid so that we can get this rotated properly um, at the end of the build. So that'll be going, that's not going to stay there. Um, and here we go, we're just going to try and get this to the exact right angle that I want. It needs to be really impressive and sort of soaring up. And then we'll select everything. This is where the brick pieces come into play. And then rotate this around so we've got four of them in exactly the right place so that we can build the temple in the gap between all the uh, serpent tails here. So spin these pieces now into where they're going to sit on either side of the guest path. The guests are going to pass under this, whether they're going to the Gibbon Islands or to some of the new habitats we're going to start today. Left, right, forward, back, doesn't matter where, they're going to have to pass under this arch, which is exactly what we want. And then we're going to use this Indian temple piece from the base game, which is recolorable. This is such an amazing piece. And again, we've got this to the right kind of Balinese colour and there you can see it beginning to take shape. I <laughs> love this archway so much. It's one of my favourite things I've built for sure. Um, we're going to try and replicate the circular base. Um, we don't have a circular piece quite big enough. The individual pieces are all slightly too small and using the standard curve pieces is too big. But just by fudging it a bit with loads of the pieces you can get something that looks really good as long as you don't look at it too closely. And then to seal the effect we're going to place some more of these snake pieces all the way around the outside of it so it looks like the tails are growing around the temple. Let's move on now and take care of the inhabitant of the temple, the monkey. So this is one of the Largiban statues. Uh, we're going to put him in there and then start building the rest of the temple around him. Ignore those peacock feathers there. That's a little trick that I came up with for the front of the zoo, which I really liked, but I decided it wasn't quite what I was looking for here, so we'll get rid of those in a second. We're going to concentrate on these decorative pieces, which are very Balinese in, um, in style, and build the majority of the temple out of these, and just get that kind of spiky, complex look that they seem to favour in Bali. Um, use a few more um, stones and statue bases etc to start making it feel solid. So basically once I've got one side that I'm happy with we're just going to copy this round so that this temple looks pretty much the same whatever angle you're looking at it from. We'll put some more pieces up on the roof to try and take this away from being an Indian style temple towards more of a Balinese style temple and then we're going to use these rocks which I've completely forgotten about these are the temple stone pieces from the South America pack. Uh, a few of them are recolorable and they can come in really useful so we can get a sort of crumbling old temple look going on here. Um, we'll put a bit of decoration around the monkey's face as well. And we are almost done with the actual build of this archway. We'll take a quick look at where we are now. And there we go. I really like how that looks. Obviously it's stood in the middle of nowhere at the moment, but um, once we get all the plants in, then this is gonna look really impressive. We're gonna pay close attention to the base of the columns first of all. I want these bits to look absolutely perfect and really sit into the landscape. Uh, and then we'll start doing loads more planting all the way around the rest of the area. And we also need to sort the paths out. So I tried loads and loads of different ideas for walls to go around the paths. But what I wanted was something good looking, but like it wouldn't cost the zoo too much to do all of it. And I decided the best idea would be a sort of dry stone wall effect. Uh, and happily, I'd already built one for Tecton Zoo for the Machu Picchu area. Um, and so I put the blueprint into the map and just really hoped that it was recolorable. Um, otherwise I'd have to start from scratch and happily it was. So I've managed to get it all to the correct color for this kind of Indonesian vibe. 
And then with the addition of a few pieces of moss for detail and to join it into the ground nicely, there we go. We're gonna place this wall all the way around the area on both sides of the path, just so that this area really gets its own kind of vibe to it. And just get that Balinese flavor going all the way around, and especially with the archway as well. I want it to feel like as you approach the archway and especially as you cross under the archway and enter the area, that you really are getting into a whole different part in the zoo now after the Australian area that's gonna come before this. Let's get on to the main part of the planting. So I thought this tree looked nice, um, put around that way. <laughs> and then we're gonna use some of these ferns, which as you know, I absolutely love. And then loads of the new vines as well, growing up the sides of these um, statue plinths, which looks really cool. And again, you really wanna make it look like it is part of the environment and it's emerging from the jungle rather than just being sort of stuck there. We'll get some bamboo in as well just to sort of separate the entrance from the rest of it. Really cool custom tree from Romano Palacios's palm pack that we've used a lot in this area. And then we're just gonna fill this in with jungle everywhere. And this is really starting to come together now. Looks really lush. What we need to do now is move on to that orange square that you see there. That is gonna be a cassowary habitat. And that's what we're gonna build now. I love cassowaries. They are the closest thing to a velociraptor that we're gonna get on the, the planet at the moment. And if you're wondering why a bird from the Australia pack is gonna be in the islands area, it's because cassowary are Indonesian birds. They live primarily in Indonesia. Uh, they also get down to Papua New Guinea. And then at some point in the fairly recent past, if I remember my research correctly, they uh, either rafted or by some other means made their way to Australia. And there's a few forests on the very northern tip of Australia where they live, which is why you find them in the Australia pack. But they are predominantly an Indonesian bird and they are gonna be an amazing first animal for the area or the first animal that the guests are gonna see anyway. So we're gonna build a fairly simple habitat for them. I want this to be really realistic and less uh, sort of architectural than some of the habitats that we've done recently, just so we get a nice balance. So we're gonna be using uh, what's called a ha-ha ditch to keep the animals in. Uh, this is something that was invented in formal gardens in I think the late 17th century. I don't know if it was invented in England, that I think the name certainly was, but um, it might've been invented by the French or something. I'm not sure who first came up with the idea, but basically you sink a ditch into the ground and then have the ground at the same level as the path or wherever guests are gonna be. So when you look at the habitat, there appears to be no separation between you and the animals. And then you can use the ditch to keep the animals in because by the time they get to the bottom of the ditch the wall is going to be too high for them to get over so it's not like a moat where you ideally don't want the animals in there at all the animals can get in there whenever they like but when they're at the bottom it's going to be too high for them to get out that's going to enable us to use some actually fairly simple fencing in this habitat and then disguise it with all the plants that we're gonna have in here, and then just a few rocks to round it all off. I don't often use the in-game barriers, but I'm gonna use the chain link here, and then change the posts to be a different type of fence to the actual fence, um, because the log ones are a bit more substantial. We'll drop one of our forage box enrichments in, and then it's time for Franchise Masters. So, have you ever noticed when you're trying to place an enrichment item, you get it in exactly the right place, you place it down, and Planet Zoo edits the terrain and completely ruins everything you've done. Well, no more. All you need to do is get the path tab open, hold down control and place a piece of path wherever you wanna put the enrichment item. Then you can place the enrichment item like so. The terrain will not move and then you can just delete the path piece and there we go, no editing required and the enrichment is in the perfect place. Onto the shelter. So this is a generic holding pen that I made a few weeks ago to place around the zoo next to habitats and just bring a bit of realism to the zoo in habitats where a separate holding area might be necessary. And we're gonna use this and modify it to turn it into a shelter for the cassowaries. We're gonna fill in the sides and make it a proper shelter and join the in-game barriers on so that they meet up exactly with it and we'll get the keeper gate in there so the keepers will actually enter the habitat through this shelter. We're gonna fill it in with some more concrete and then put some of the conservation wooden slats down the sides to soften the outline a bit. 
and this is at the back of the habitat so it's going to get covered up with all the lovely plants that we're going to fill in the habitat with now i want a slightly grassier area at the front here then we're going to have some dustier areas behind it make some paths in with the dirt tool so it looks like the cassowaries have sort of paths that they prefer to take around the habitat we're going to sink some more of these stalactite pieces down to get some more interesting rock work in here we want this habitat to be simple but also really realistic looking so we need to do a lot of work with rocks and grass and things like that just to bring it all together so we don't have huge areas of blank terrain we're going to drop one of our dragons in to give a bit of a focal point to the habitat and that is a huge chunk of the island's built let's take a look at it now that is an entrance i'm so happy with how that turned out it looks really cool and really close to the original here's the cassowary in their habitat with the arch in the background i just think that looks pretty uh splendid <laughs> Really happy with the habitat as well. Really nice and green and lush, but not too expensive looking. Probably um, one of the most realistic habitats in the zoo so far, I think. Um, let's take another look at the archway as the guests would pass underneath it. It's really impressive, leading them down towards the Gibbon Islands and the rest of the habitats down there. You might get a sneak peek of one of the next inhabitants, uh, the sign there. And let's see how far we've come today. Wow. That is definitely the most area that we have covered in a single episode, I think. I really hope you enjoyed this, pals. I will see you in a week's time for the next episode of San Bernardino Zoo. Thanks for watching. Bye.